Hi, I'm Pato from Free FinCal and in this video I want to talk to you about my fifth uh, health insurance claim experience. I've been having a United India policy, uh, a base policy, uh, actually an individual cover for uh, uh, myself, my wife and uh, son after he was born and uh, a separate cover for my mother since 2006 onwards and uh, we have made uh, five claims on it so far one claim for me one claim for my wife uh, and three claims for my mother i talked about my uh, uh, my fourth claim uh, for my mother uh, for a ear surgery that happened in uh, december 2018 and uh, my fifth claim for, was also for my mother on july 10th 2019 she uh, fell down late in the night and uh, we, uh, I knew that it was a fracture and uh, uh, I immediately rushed her to the hospital and uh, we found out that it was a, um, a pubic uh, ramus fracture. So it was a fracture of um, the, the pubic bone and uh, thankfully it uh, did not require surgery and uh, it would heal on its own by bed rest. It took a while to heal because my mother is 72 and she has Parkinson's but it has healed and uh, she is uh, uh, back on her feet and uh, doing her things. She's been uh, back on her feet for, for about a month now. So that's, that's that. The um, so, But I want to talk to you about this claim experience because I found out new things about it. I'm finding newer and newer things about health insurance. Uh, uh, also, the reason why I want to talk about this is uh, there's always a debate whether to use uh, cashless uh, or should I pay money and uh, reimburse later. Because uh, if you go to ca if you go via the cashless option, the hospital may uh, make the patient suffer through different tests and make them stay and uh, hike up the bill and so on. Uh, whereas in a in a reimbursement claim, that doesn't happen. Uh, that is the general belief. Um, with some fa factual evidence supporting that but let's talk about that so first let me talk about my experience and then we will get to that so she was hospitalized late uh, or actually in the early hours of July 11th because she fell late on, on July 10th and uh, we knew immediately thankfully because the treating doctor was actually in a hospital next door uh, for those of you who know Chennai uh, we admitted her to uh, Chennai Meenakshi and the treating doctor was in Isabel which is just next door and so she he came immediately he's our family uh, orthopedist um, because he has been treating my, my me my father my mother everybody for a long time so he immediately said the no surgery is required by about one o'clock that night he had he looked at the x-ray he received on the on whatsapp and he looked at it and said no surgery is necessary just better so we knew that uh, what happened was the um, the next day morning the insurance guy came uh, and said uh, if you want to go cashless please uh, give me your mother's uh, ID proof and also the health insurance you know card details card number policy number etc. He wanted to know what is the policy and what is the uh, sum insured because if the policy has got a room rent uh, sublimit uh, then um, it can be a problem and so on. Our uh, room rent was 4300 rupees. Uh, a day uh, I mean the, the policy is for her is 5.5 lakhs worth so it's for up to 5,500 a day is okay uh, for the United India policy but what happened was by the time he came and uh, uh, asked for these details the doctor was doctors were already talking about discharge because uh, no hospital I mean there was no reason for her to be in hospital and okay I said all right I mean uh, since she's going to get discharged if I'm going to apply for health insurance now and uh, it has to the cash class will get approved and then immediately we're going to discharge and everything it will take almost the entire day and one more day extra uh, almost it can even take the next business day so to for everything to complete uh, so I thought why should I put her through that let's bring her home but then what happened was uh, then I decided that then what happened was her when her sodium electrolyte results came and uh, I mean her electrolyte results came and her sodium levels were low her potassium levels were low um, and that was dangerously low. Uh, she has been having headaches uh, for the past few months I we then realized that those headaches were because of low sodium and uh, uh, we thought it was migraine or uh, something else and so on that didn't work out. So thanks to this fall at least that problem surfaced. So uh, th that was treated, uh, a nephrologist was called in, her kidney functions were looked at uh, and so on and so on and so on. That was treated and that took 3-4 days and in the meantime I actually, 
I thought, uh, then I, I was, uh, I mean, debating whether should I go for cash loss or should I just go reimbursement. I thought, okay, it's not going to take a lot of money. It's going to be a small amount. So there's no surgery involved. This is going to be a few days stay. So I left it. So she was there in the hospital for about four days, four and a half days, maybe. I don't know. So the bill came to about 49,000, which is very, very, very reasonable. Of course, not much was done. But it was reasonable. They had some, they did some add-ons like unnecessary add-ons like physiotherapy and so on. But okay, it was only a few K. Well, that's that they also have to survive. They have to pay bills and so on. They have to pay salaries. Very limited. So now the point is now I had to uh, do a um, reimbursement claim. I had to apply for it. So I applied for it. You have to apply for it uh, within uh, 10 to 15 days of getting the discharge summary or uh, the doctor saying the treatment has been completed. Uh, so I did that as soon as possible. I did everything. Then I got a letter from uh, Health India, uh, United India, uh, via their TPA, which is Health in Health India uh, HITPA, Health Insurance TPA of India, HITPA. Uh, they asked for some details, which I had already sent. So I sent a copy and said, I already the original is already with you. But anyway, here is a copy I had sent for that and so on. They wanted the internal case papers of the hospital. So the internal case papers took some time because the hospital had not yet processed them. So I waited for that and sent the internal case papers along with the uh, photocopies of uh, whatever I had already sent. The originals were already with them. So I just pointed out it's with you. Please check. Then they asked me a question. The hospital was a networked hospital. Why did you choose to do reimbursement claim and not go for cashless claim? That was interesting. Then I had sent that. Uh, then I said, look, it happened in the middle of the night. It was an emergency. I had to write something like that. It was an emergency. I, we couldn't uh, decide on the, the I mean, uh, I mean, it was too late. Uh, we, uh, we had to take her immediately. We had to uh, start the process immediately. And so when I wrote something like that, you know, some blah, blah, just some excuse to hand. Uh, I could have taken cashless, but uh, because of this confusion, whether she will be discharged immediately or not, I didn't take it and I just left it at that. And then the... I mean, once you stay in a hospital for more than 24 hours, the billing department will call you and say pay in advance or pay uh, some money. So I paid the money. Once I paid the money, cashless is out of the question. So that happened. Then they actually sent a guy from United India. They sent, they they, are, they hire um, uh, people. Uh, the person who came to my house is a male nurse who does part-time work. He is actually a checker. He's a fact verifier. He came home and he actually uh, checked whether... Uh, this is actually true, uh, whether we had uh, taken, uh, whether this hospitalization is true or not, and he took some details in a form and so on. Then he went to the hospital and verified whether this person was actually admitted in the hospital and etc, etc, etc. I asked him why he said many people are cheating and uh, sending false uh, uh, claims. So that is the reason why I think the insurer prefers cashless because the, the incidence of fraud will be much lower in such a situation. So I sent all that. Then, of course, the insurer, I sent my sent the internal case papers, everything, everything. They said, I, I, uh, then first time they said, I didn't get it. Then I said, I look, I had already sent everything to you on a courier. Please go check it on such and such a date. Uh, thankfully, I had the courier slip with me. So I tell, told them the date when it when it arrived. And so they came back and said, I found, the, I found your papers. But they still kept on asking me, why have you uh, ch chosen uh, reimbursement instead of cash loss? So again, I say I said the same blah 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 expense, uh, same excuse three times before they finally understood I have answered the question. <laughs> so finally, after uh, last couple of days ago, the claim was approved. The money was for forty nine thousand something, forty nine thousand two hundred rupees. Some five thousand was removed, maybe for some non medical expenses, whatever, whatever. The rest of it has been approved. So finally, the so July tenth hospitalization. This is uh, claim uh, up approval was like October 1st, 1st, 2nd, whatever, something like that. First few days of October. So that's the kind of timeline for reimbursement. The previous, uh, my December claim uh, reimbursement took much longer for my mother that had problems about uh, uh, room rent sublimates and I had to explain and fight it out. I had complained to United India and so on and so on. So the, that brings us to this question. What should I do? If I have health insurance today, should I take, uh, should I uh, go for cashless or should I go for reimbursement? Of course, if, if the hospitalization is in a, a non-network hospital, automatically it is uh, reimbursement only. You have to pay and then get it reimbursed via the uh, claim application process. There's no question of cashless. But in a network hospital, what should you do? 
my advice is and i have done um three cashless uh, claims so far the process is super smooth it's very very good and uh, uh, always go for cashless uh do, not because of all these hassles that i talked to you but just because during the hospital stay the process will be super smooth for you and you don't need to worry up to the insurance limit you have that much work uh, uh you know blanket uh cover you don't have to worry about arranging money and so on you just need some money for non-medical expenses day-to-day -day small small expenses and so on uh they will not in some hospitals they will send they will give you the prescription and say go get the uh, medicines in the middle of the night they won't do all that uh, when you have cashless they will take care of it internally it is so peaceful and uh, nice. The only problem is if you get admitted in a network hospital uh, 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 and the treating doctor is unknown or you, you uh, or if you don't have any kind of reference for the treating doctor. So it's always better to uh, get hospitalized via a known doctor uh, either via a reference or you actually know the doctor and uh, he or she admits you to the hospital. Then, then the possibility of the hospital putting you through different tests, adding on unnecessary expenses, uh, this and that will be less, will typically be less. Otherwise, they can find out what is your health insurance limit and then jack up the treatment costs right up to that limit. That has been known. I know personally several cases. I have seen it firsthand. Not for me, but I, I have seen it firsthand to other people. Um, and I have also heard several horror stories from hospital staff themselves about their own hospital. That's a different matter. Uh, what hospital I'm not mentioning. Uh, so uh, it's always better to get treated uh, via a known doctor or via a reference from a known doctor. Uh, if you if you can if you can handle it. I mean, otherwise, if it's an emergency, you don't know which hospital everything. That that is a that's the luck of the draw. You can't help it. So don't go via the reimbursement route. It can be painful, especially. Forget about you have to arrange money and all that. But after the post, pro, uh, after you get home, the claim processing can be uh, difficult. The paperwork will be quite a bit. You can't do everything online. HATP has an online option, but they did not recognize that I had actually replied to them online. This this kind of problems will also be there. So don't, of course, maybe with a private insurer, things may be a little bit more smoother and so on. But uh, still, you have to do paperwork for a reimbursement claim and if the claim is i mean if the claim is for 10 lakhs 15 lakhs or 5 lakhs whatever few lakhs whatever large amount the paperwork will be immense because number of papers you have to keep track number of bills you have to keep track will be very difficult uh, it's a lot of work i've done it many times i can tell you it's, it's it's a pain in the ass so avoid reimbursement claims go for cashless whenever it's available but also go via a treating doctor whether it's cashless or reimbursement so that's what I wanted to say in this video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Uh, so I'll talk about, uh, hopefully, I'm, I don't want to talk about any more uh, health insurance claim. I'll talk about something happier next time. Bye-bye.